Welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina. Home to the newest club to join Major League Soccer, Charlotte FC. Okay, we don't want to do the same old thing. We want to do something new. We're not going to be afraid to do something different than the rest of MLS or the rest of soccer. This hasn't been done in our area, at least for MLS. You know, it's, it's something new. It's, it's, this is history. Of course, it's important what we will do on the pitch. This is the most important, finally. But first is to build this structure to be sustainable through the years. As this club embarks on their first season, we wanted to find out what we can expect from the play on the field to the supporters in the stands and the unique flavor the Queen City will bring to MLS. The past decade has been a period of unprecedented growth in Major League Soccer. Since 2010, 11 new teams have joined the league, five of which are located in the southeast of the U.S. Expansion interest in Charlotte began to heat up in the summer of 2018 when news broke that David Tepper, owner of the Carolina Panthers, was putting together an expansion bid to bring MLS to the Queen City. Hello, Charlotte! And on December 17th, 2019, that bid became a reality. So now it's my pleasure to welcome Charlotte to Major League Soccer. You ready to party? There's so much energy here, and there's a lot of soccer history in the Southeast, both at the youth level, at the collegiate level, and now at the professional level. We're one of the fastest growing uh, cities in the, in the country. If you go around Charlotte all, you'll see right near the stadium on Stonewall Avenue, all the buildings going up, all the millennials that live within walking distance to the stadium, you know, a large Hispanic uh, community that are basically uh, not served by the other uh, sports teams here. Probably the least amount of sports teams for the largest population in the country. That sounds like a pretty good mix. Winning an expansion bid is just the first step, however. From there, the newborn club must grow up quickly. In 2020, the team's official name, Charlotte FC, was announced, beating out names like Charlotte Crown, Charlotte Fortune, and the Charlotte Monarchs. The club colors and logo were soon to follow, featuring a crown in the center of the crest that symbolizes the royal legacy of the city's namesake, Queen Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz as well as the Charlotte Blue that is recognized throughout the region, from famous NASCAR drivers to the Carolina Panthers. Well, here we are at the home of Charlotte FC, right in the heart of the Queen City. And while fans are used to seeing that other kind of football being played here on March 5th, 2022, soccer will take center stage. And with a capacity of 75,000, Charlotte FC are going to look to break the MLS attendance record currently held by Atlanta United and Kaylin Carr. That smells like a rivalry brewing to me. Mm, you know what they say about records, though, Susanna? What's that? Some are meant to be broken. Mm. All right, let's check this place out. From everything we've seen so far, it feels like they're going to fill this place up. I know, and it sounds like it. I'm pumped. If somebody had told you when you were just a young boy that one day you would be playing for Charlotte FC in your hometown, professional soccer, in their first season in Major League Soccer, what would you say? I don't know. I just, I just say it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's something you know, growing up here playing club ball, uh, that I kind of wish for you know when I was you know there when I was like that age. So it's just great to be back and you know seeing old friends and family and stuff like that. Now I can see them on a daily basis. Now they can come to the games here at Bank of America. And I tell people all the time, like as a kid growing up, I came here to see you know Panthers games. Now like I'll be the one on the pitch now. So it's just gonna be an unreal feeling to come out here and just play in Bank of America. With all of the excitement around the first home game comes a lot of work. And no one knows that better than the head coach, Miguel Angel Ramirez. Ramirez has had a unique journey to this point. He did not play professionally as a player, but instead began his career coaching at the youth level in his hometown of Las Palmas, Spain. He eventually made his way to Qatar and then Ecuador, where he won the Copa Sudamericana with Independiente de Valle. That success put him on the radar of clubs around South America and the world, getting Ramirez a job at Internacional in Brazil, and then soon after, Charlotte FC. With your experience around the world and then in South America, did you think it was a risk to come to MLS? Always there is risk in, in any step you want to make, uh, wherever you go. 
but I wanted to come here. Um, I believe the people don't know uh, the real level of this league. And now the, the, the players that are coming with us are suffering in the trainings as well uh, because of the rhythm, because of the intensity. It's like it takes time to, to adapt to, to these demands. What would, what would be success um, for you this season? So first is to consolidate a project and a club because there was nothing here. So now we are trying to build a structure inside the club and set up the modus operandi, so how to do the things, regardless the coach, regardless the sporting directors, because I will leave, sporting director will leave. So how we can set up a structure that can be here as a legacy forever. So this is the first step. Yes. We had a chance to uh, chat with your head coach, Miguel Angel, and he said something yesterday that struck us both. He said that he is a teacher before he is a coach. How has that kind of translated on the field with his like coaching style? Like, what have you learned from him so far? Um, just to express myself more and you know take some of the fear out of my game. I think playing in my position and playing with risk, if you mess up, it normally leads to a goal. So. Just have that freedom and know that he's going to support us and he already said he will own up for any mistakes that happen because he wants us to play in this style and mm. it just gives you confidence just to, you know, go all out in the, into the philosophy. Another huge component of any expansion team is the supporters themselves, both casual fans new to the sport and passionate supporters groups that serves as the foundation of any game day atmosphere. What's, what's crazy about it to me is, is that it's going to continue on in history. One day we're not going to be the board members of Southbound and Crown. <laughs> Southbound and Crown is the name of one of those groups, focused on connecting to the wider region of North and South Carolina. We sat down with two of the three founding members, Michael Gallimore and Matt Burris. The third founder, Brenton McCaskill, was killed in a home invasion in November of 2020. Brenton was 32 years old, and Southbound and Crown is one way his loved ones honor his legacy. He was already so involved in Charlotte FC. Yeah. He already loved this football club. I mean, it, it was already set up. It was already a part of him. His, his Facebook right now, because we haven't changed it, is about Charlotte FC. Yeah. Um, so he was just, this was his, this was going to be his future. I mean, it, it, sometimes it can be cliche, but I mean, it, it's it's true, you know, supporter streaks can become families. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes they're big families, and sometimes they're small families. But it's about finding the right family for you. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible way to honor somebody who was so important, who loved the club so much, was passionate about it. But to, as you say, like turn a negative into a positive and to, to give back and sort of create this community, you know? And that's what I feel like supporters groups are all about, right? You know, all that gets, gets you know, gets down in your bones mm -hmm. and that's what it is. And, and this is step one, phase one, day one of that for Charlotte FC. Another supporters group with soccer deep in their bones calls themselves Blue Furia and has ties to communities throughout Latin America. So for the people that say that Charlotte doesn't really have soccer fans here, what, what would you say to that? Oh man, uh, they have a big misunderstanding, I think. The reason why Blue 40 has grown the way it has is because we come from generations of following our national teams, our club teams from other countries. And so that's been a missing link for someone that's been moving from other countries to come into Charlotte. I mean, we, we haven't had a team out here. And so it's just been a big waiting period to finally get an MLS team. And so now that we actually have it, people are just coming from all places, all South America, Central America. The team has a huge Latin influence from yes. the coach to the players on the pitch. Absolutely. And we've seen a big impact, especially of Peruvians more, across more the More than 50%. Okay. More than 50%. <laughs> there yes. you go. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, how important is that from like a supporter's standpoint to see kind of that reflected um, on the pitch and off it? They, they're going to need us. They're going to need us because they're going to miss their countries. And guess what? Blue Furia are there for them. So we're going to make them feel that they're home. 
the supporters will surely bring things to life inside the stadium. However, when it comes to bringing things to life on the broadcast, that will fall to the likes of Jamie Moreno. The Spanish language broadcaster for the Carolina Panthers and now Charlotte FC. How excited are you to call this first match? I, I don't think excited is the word. Okay. I think it's overexcited. That overexcitement is part of what put Jamie on the map. One of the first Spanish language play callers in the NFL, Moreno's bombastic touchdown calls for the Panthers went viral across social media. And there's much anticipation for what he will bring to an MLS match. It's a big responsibility for us. And what I say is a big responsibility because being bilingual uh, is a bridge. Yeah. So in one side of the bridge, we represent the FC in front of the community, Hispanic community. But on the other side of the bridge, we represent the Hispanic community in front of the Charlotte FC. So that's a huge responsibility for us. Did you said for you, you, you just want this to be fun. You want people to have fun and enjoy it. So what are you going to bring to these soccer broadcasts? What can people expect? We say uh, during the broadcastings, we start uh, training the people uh -huh. that we say, y tú? Y ya te pusiste la corona, Chalo de FC, une a nuestra gente. Have you wear the crown yet? Have you wear the crown? Chalo de FC, unite our people. Jamie, when you, when you think about your work with the Panthers, is there anything within that body of work that you think you're going to carry over into the Charlotte FC broadcast? Any sort of lessons, nuances, things like that? One thing I have learned through the years is uh, you take wins home and you celebrate them, but when you lose, you leave it on the stadium and you go home and try to be the best you can be. New York Red Bulls fans may recognize another voice in the Charlotte FC broadcast booth, that of former player Lloyd Sam, who is new to Charlotte, but hyped for the home opener. Let's go back a little bit and like, look at your career okay. at MLS and like, so much success. I think, you know, I remember mostly from those Red Bull days playing against you. Um, when you look at like, what it takes to be successful in Major League Soccer, what are some of those elements and are you seeing that starting to come together with this Charlotte team? You need talent in the team. Um, and let me relate that to Charlotte FC. We have a lot of talent in this team, a lot of talent. Our midfield alone, you know, we've got Jordi Alciva, Alan Franco, TTRTs, you might not know these names j just yet, but for example, TTRTs is a name that you're gonna know. One of the hardest things is to know if there's time to gel, because we're gonna be playing against teams that have had a few years, and you know, they might add two or three players a year to a base. There's never been a base here. Obviously, we've got a great coach in Miguel Angel Ramirez, and he obviously knows, you know, he's playing against the clock, right? You've just got preseason to get guys up to speed, and it's all about how we gel. I guess if you were to compare Charlotte to, you know, these various expansion clubs, where would you see them maybe falling in, in that scope of things? Oh my gosh, is this the toughest question ever or what? One of the things I've been trying to do is to curb the expectations, take the pressure off the team. Why do you think that's helpful? Because I think uh, pressure's a real thing in football, right? You know when you're playing for whoever you're playing for, if you're expected to win the league, it's, it's harder, you know? If you're not expected to win, you can go out there and play your football and relax and, you know, enjoy it a little bit more. But expectations is not your best friend in football. From now on, we need to grow up on the pitch, performing every day better. I think this is just the start, you know what I mean? So like I, now with the first game coming up, I'm, I think we're all excited with all the fans and hopefully it'll be filled. We've been waiting two years for some of us more. It's something new, it's, it's this is history. The football uh, put people together. It doesn't matter uh, what color you are, what race you are, what religion you are, what sex you are. It's, football is only one language. As Charlotte gets set to make its big first impression, We've gotten a chance to go all across the city and meet fans that are ready for opening day. 
That doesn't always mean that it's gonna be so easy for an expansion team. There's always challenges on the pitch, but this is a group that seems set to learn and a manager that's willing to teach. So true, Kalen. I also love that we have a new soccer hotbed in North America. The Southeast is on the soccer map with Charlotte, Atlanta, Nashville, at Orlando into the mix. I also love that everything they're doing is so uniquely Charlotte. They're creating a real identity for themselves right out of the gate. And I'm so here for soccer in the Queen City.